I'm 13 News Now meteorologist Evan Stewart. Good Saturday evening. We wanted to give you an update on what's going on with Florence. You can see it's still way out there in the central Atlantic, a long ways away from the island of Bermuda. And just because it's so far away and the computer models are still differentiating in where the storm will eventually go, that's why there's still a lot of uncertainty in this extended forecast. So let's give you the 5 o'clock advisory from the Hurricane Center. We'll get a new one at 11 o'clock, but as of 5 p.m., the storm had winds of 70 miles per hour, so we have seen that slight strengthening. Maybe by the 11 o'clock advisory, we'll be back to Hurricane Florence, possibly tomorrow morning's 5 a.m. advisory. But either case, we're looking at the storm slowly moving to the west at around 5 miles per hour. And you know that forecast track continues it here off towards the southeast coastline. So by Tuesday afternoon, still south of the island of Bermuda, but notice it does call for it to strengthen to a category four storm with winds of 140 to 145 miles per hour. And of course, the big question is what happens as we get into the day on Thursday as the storm is approaching the southeast coastline. Now, this cone that you see here is actually made up of a series of circles. And if you take over the past five years where storms have been, this is sort of that margin of error that the Hurricane Center builds into this cone because the storm could take this southern route or it could take this northern route. It doesn't necessarily mean it'll follow right in the middle of that cone. That's where the Hurricane Center thinks it's most likely to go, but they allow for that difference. And of course, the farther and farther out you go, the bigger that error and uh, margin of error becomes. So as we add on all the computer models, you notice they're pretty much in that cone for the most part. Some are clustered just to the north of the line. Some of them are clustered just to the south of the line. But that forecast track right now is carrying it very close to around Wilmington, North Carolina as we get into Thursday evening. Now we talk about our two big computer models, the American and the European. So I wanted to put both of those on there because there are some differences in the two models from what we saw yesterday and even what they're still forecasting with the storm. I'll take you through Monday, Tuesday and into Wednesday. We'll stop it here at noon Wednesday and notice that they're still in fairly good agreement towards the southwest of the island of Bermuda, still off the southeast coastline. But notice that the European is a little bit farther to the west than the American model. And that trend continues even as we get into Thursday at midday. Keep in mind that the Hurricane Center has the storm pretty much right in here around 2 p.m. on Thursday. So right now, at least, the European is the closest of the two models to what the Hurricane Center forecast is. The American model is a little bit east of there. And as we get into Friday, the remnants of the storm or the center circulation up near Raleigh with the European model. But notice the American model right here around Cape Hatteras. This, uh, this verifies this will be a very significant storm for the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And even here in Hampton Roads with those winds coming in out of the east, we'll see some of that tidal water f piling up and we could see some significant issues with flooding. And then as we go into the day Saturday, into the early morning hours, the American keeps it still there over parts of Cape Hatteras, while the European model carries it up towards near Emporia. And that is the big concern with this storm. Of course, where it makes landfall will have major issues with the wind. But even if the storm makes landfall, say, over Wilmington or points southward, I think a big issue will be the amount of rain with this storm. Now, we talk about the American and the European models, but they also have what are known as ensembles with them. So if we take the storm, this darker line right in here, that is the average of all of these lines. Now, the official forecast carries it right here. And I know it's a little hard to see because we lose that coastline, but that's the official forecast for the European right near Wilmington. And then it just sort of meanders here around parts of Virginia and North Carolina right along the state line. But notice that some of the ensemble members take it in different directions. Basically, what we do, we just had one of the P3 Hurricane Hunter aircraft out there sort of investigating the storm, but we still don't know exactly how strong the storm is because we don't have any observations out in the middle of the ocean. So we make an estimate that it's at 70 miles per hour based on satellite and other information surrounding it. And it might be a little bit stronger, it might be a little bit weaker, the water temperatures might be a little bit different. So if we just tweak those numbers just a little bit, maybe even only a couple of millibars, and that means that we get a little bit of a different outcome when we run that computer model again. Think of it like a butterfly effect. So that's why we see that big spread starting to show up the farther and farther out you go with some computer uh, ensemble members of the European taking it here down towards Florida. Some of them sort of similar to the American model and some curve it way out to sea. Now I think the chances of this curving out to sea are pretty slim to, uh, as we go through the next five days. 
But both of the computer models, and one of the big concerns, as we see with the American, whether it's here over Hatteras or the European inland, they both call for the storm to sort of stall. And where that happens, that's where we have the biggest potential for seeing a whole lot of rain. So let's talk once again about that storm track. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, very near the coastline. And if you were to follow that imaginary line in there, that would take it somewhere here around Wilmington, North Carolina, or close to the Virginia, North Carolina state line, or North Carolina, South Carolina state line between Wilmington and Myrtle Beach. So we shaded in that area with the highest risk from pretty much here in uh, southern parts of Hampton Roads, Virginia Beach, right around the state line, back through North Carolina, South Carolina, and North Georgia. So that's the biggest area that we're watching as we go into Thursday and Friday. Let's talk about that rain. This is the European model again. That's the one, remember, that sort of stalls it back here over parts of Emporia. This is the rainfall potential with that storm. If it does stall over parts of eastern Virginia or even central Virginia and North Carolina, we're looking at a lot of rain. And again, this is the potential if it were to follow that track. Keep in mind that we're still talking five, six, seven days away, so a lot can change between this Saturday and next Saturday. But right now, if Things were to verify, and the European model is the closest to the Hurricane Center forecast. We're looking at a lot of rain, and think back to Matthew. We're looking at the potential here for quite a bit of significant flooding in some of those low-lying and poor drainage areas. And I think that might be the big takeaway with this storm, whether it comes ashore in South Carolina, North Carolina, or even here across the eastern parts of North Carolina or closer to Hampton Roads. Wherever it makes landfall, we'll have to deal with those winds, the storm surge, but again, the big you know, regional view might be that this is going to be another big rainmaker in an area that has already been saturated all summer. We had a wet summer across eastern Virginia, North Carolina, and through much of the mid-Atlantic. I think that will be another big concern as we get into the end path of this storm. So likely that we will see that east coast landfall as a major hurricane. Where that will happen, still not clear. And heavy prolonged rainfall is probably one of the biggest issues that we could see later as after the storm comes ashore and where it stalls. And again, still so many questions as to what might happen with this storm. And we have two other tropical storms out there. We have Tropical Storm Isaac, which is expected to become a hurricane and head over towards the Caribbean. And then we have Tropical Storm Helene, which is expected to become a hurricane, maybe a Category 2, and slowly start to curve. So there's still a lot more out there that we'll have to watch even after we get through dealing with Florence. But again, the takeaway from all of this is the storm is still several days away and it might not be until Monday or Tuesday maybe before we know exactly or have a better idea even where the storm is exactly going to go. So I encourage you to keep attuned to Channel 13. Keep, us, keep watching us on 13 News Now. Check out our Facebook pages, our YouTube pages, our Twitter pages, and we'll keep you updated throughout the weekend and early next week.